Hi, this is Morphy Krishnanivarti. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to teach indefinite articles A and Ya. First of all, A and Ya mean one. A is equal to one and is also equal to one. If I say I have a pen, meaning is that I have one pen. If I say there is an and, meaning is that there is one and. After that, when to write A and when to write Ya. See, before singular countable nouns, singular countable nouns, we use either A or an. Then what are called singular countable nouns? Those nouns which can be counted on our fingers are using our fingers are called countable nouns. For example, pen. We can say by counting, I have one, two, two pens, she has three pens, she has five pens, like that. Pen, book, cat, dog, man, all these are countable nouns. So, before the singular countable nouns, you should use A or Ya. Then, when should you take Ya and when should you take Ya? First of all, you should learn when or where you should write Ya. See, Ya should be written before that singular countable noun which starts with a vowel sound. Look at this word. I am not saying that yang should be written before a word which starts with a vowel. You know very well that in English we have these five letters. In English alphabet we have these five letters. A, E, I, O, U which are called vowels. But uh, I am not talking about these vowels here. So, I am not talking about the vowels in English alphabet. I am talking about the vowels which are also called vowel sounds in English pronunciation. At the primary school level, the teachers ask the children to write yarn before those words which start with one of these five vowels in English alphabet. But when you want to learn the grammar perfectly, you cannot follow this. Up to the primary school level, this is okay. But once you want to learn the grammar perfectly, you cannot follow this. You have to learn this. So it is a bit difficult. Then, what are these vowels in English pronunciation? As you know very well, there are 26 letters in English alphabet. These 26 letters give out 44 sounds. Of course, these letters and their combinations give us 44 sounds. So, totally there are 44 sounds in English which are divided into vowels or vowel sounds and consonant sounds. Okay? There are 20 vowel sounds in English language and there are 24 consonant sounds in English language. So, our point is that yan should be written before those singular countable nouns which start with a vowel sound. Then what are these 20 vowel sounds that we have in English? Let me give you the list now. Okay. So, whenever the first sound of the given word happens to be one of these 20 sounds, you should use yan before that word. So, let me give you the list of those 20 sounds which are called vowels in English pronunciation. It's all about pronunciation, not about spelling. Keep, the, keep this point in your mind. So, what are those 20 vowel sounds or vowels that we have in English pronunciation? The first one. A. See, these are 
the symbols of these sounds okay these symbols are part of ipa international phonetic alphabet so these are not english letters and you should write a slash before this symbol and a slash after this symbol these two slashes indicate that the symbol which is written before between them is a symbol of english pronunciation so a the sound is a as in account okay here a is giving this sound a the second one a as in cut here u is giving this sound a the third one is a this colon indicates that elevation a that is an elevation so this colon indicates that elevation as in master a is giving this sound master next step fourth one o oh, a is also an elevation o oh, this is called deep a uh, in english pronunciation and uh, the example is f r i s t first it's not first not first it is first deep a uh, sound and the next sound is e as in pin i is giving this sound next uh, elevation for this sound e as in feel you cannot say fill that is another word its spelling is f i l l but this is f e e l feel so this indicates that elevation for e sound next one o as in put u is giving this sound o put next one elevation for this sound as in room o this sound is o these two letters o are giving this sound next one a as in den e is giving this sound day den next year o as in cot o as in cot pot lot like next one o as in do okay o sound so as in do next one ya as in yant so a is giving this sound yant so these first 12 symbols represent what we call pure vowels or pure vowel sounds in english language pure vowels represent each of these pure vowels represents just one sound that's why they are also called monophthongs okay so these are the first 12 vowels which are called pure vowels or monophthongs let's look at the second group of vowels this second group of vowels is called diphthongs dive is to song means sound so two sounds are there in each of these diphthongs first one means 
we actually we can continue the number because there are 20 vowels I said up to the 12th one I have written. So among the diphthongs, first one. Av. Look at these three symbols. A and U. So try to pronounce both of them together. Av. As in gout. This is not a goat. This is gout. Okay. Next one. Av. This stands for second A sound here. And this is U. Try to pronounce these two together. Av. As in mouth. It's not mouth. It is mouth. Elevation should be there. Next one. U A. Ua. As in Ua. Of course, this word has two pronunciations. One is Ua and the second one is O. So here it is Ua. Next. Yeya. As in Sheya. It's not share. In British English, its pronunciation is Sheya. As in, okay, this A letter is giving this sound. Next one. Yay. As in, pain. A-I. These two letters are giving this sound. Yay. Pain. Next one. Oi. As in, boy. Employ like next one, yeah, as in fear, okay, yeah, and uh, the last one, I, as in light. Not light, pronounce this correctly. Light, night, kite, right, like. So it is light. So these are the eight diphthongs that we have in uh, English language. So those are 12 pure vowels and these eight diphthongs. Totally, these are 20 vowel sounds are present in English pronunciation. So when the first sound of the word which is given to you happens to be one of these 20 vowel sounds. You should use yarn before that word. Let us look at some examples. First one. There is dash umbrella. There is dash umbrella. One umbrella is there. It's clear. And it is a countable singular, a singular countable noun. Because we can count umbrellas by saying it. There are two umbrellas, there are three umbrellas, here are four umbrellas, like that. So singular countable noun. So, before this, what should we write? Is it A or Yan? To get the correct answer, first of all, you look at the very first sound of this word. Umbrella. Um. A. Ah. So, A ah is there in one of those 20 vowel sounds that I have explained until now. So, Yan should be your answer. So, there is Yan Umbrella. So you have to do this work. So look at that word. Look at the very first sound of that word. Check whether it is a vowel sound. If it is a vowel sound, you take yam. Otherwise you take ye. So that is the way to answer these questions. Let me give you as many examples as possible. I have 
dash into pan. What is the first sound of this word? E. So, this is the correct answer for this question is yang because E is also a vowel sound. So, you should take yang. Next one. Give me dash example. The right pronunciation of this word is example. So, what is the first sound? E. Once again, a vowel sound. So, right yarn. So, like this, by checking the very first sound of the given word, you will decide whether you should write A or yarn in the given blank. So, let me give you other examples. Before the kinds of sentences, you know, there are four kinds of sentences in English language, namely assertive, imperative, interrogative, and exclamatory. So, before the names of these four kinds or types of sentences, yarn without fail. For example, and assertive sentence this is an assertive sentence you cannot say a assertive sentence that's the point an assertive sentence an imperative sentence yam Interrogative sentence. Yan exclamatory sentence. So before the names of the four kinds of sentences that we have in English, okay, you should use the definite, you should use yarn without fail. So, an assertive sentence, an imperative sentence, an interrogative sentence, and an exclamatory sentence. Next group. When some abbreviations are given for designations or positions, and if those abbreviations start with uh, one of these three letters is four letters. You should take yan. The examples are yan I A S officer. Yan MP, it's not uh, MP, pronounced correctly, MP, and MP, YAM, MLA, YAM, MLC, so like that, AM, LLB, next point, dash, yeah. So is it A or Yang? The first sound is a vowel sound. That is this one. Yeah. So you have to take Yang. So Yang here. Yeah. Next one. Look at this word. Y A R. Okay. The first sound here is a not a vowel sound. It is a consonant sound. Look at this symbol. It is not there in the list of the 20 vowel symbols that I have given you. So this is not a vowel sound. Or this is not a, a symbol of one of the vowel sounds. 
so it is a consonant sound and so you have to use a here get the difference between these two look at the spellings yan ear e a r ear but a ear o e a r next point ava is it a ava or yan ava the right pronunciation of this word is ava because h is a silent letter ava so yan ava the right pronunciation is ava so yan ava next one honorable man once again h is a silent letter so it's not honorable it's only honorable o honorable man so yan honorable man next one honest man once again h is a silent letter and uh, this word those pronunciation is honest honest so yan honest man next one yan yand okay we have already discussed this yan and the first sound is ya so this is about these four examples next examples dash examination e so a vowel sound you should use ya yan examination next one example once again e is the first sound so an example next one igloo first sound is e so yan igloo next one interesting story interesting story so first sound is e so yan an interesting story next examples owl this pronunciation is owl so yan owl next one ya h is a silent letter and this word's pronunciation is ya so yan ya next one an ugly man next to nationalities before certain nationalities dash indian first sound is e so yan indian next one dash italian once again the first sound is e so yan italian next dash east indian so yan east indian dash african vowel sound is a once again a vowel sound yan africa next we're coming to other examples yatam yan atom next examples dash on building yan own building short also ow am own building next one example order yan order dash 100 rupee note 
look at this example carefully 100 rupee note how many notes are there one this one is not related to this note this one is related to this hundred 100 rupee so how many rupees are there represented by that note 100 rupees so this one is not connected to this note so here we can write a or yam and further to decide what we have to write there we should look at the very first sound here wa it's not uh, this sound this is o this is o this is not this sound you should write a here so if the first sound is not a vowel sound you should write a here so a 100 rupee note next one dash one eyed man so once again the first sound is a consonant sound so you should take a a one eyed man look at this example there is dash one thing we can do observe this sentence now guess what we should write here is it a or a yeah? in fact we should not write a or yan here okay the reason is that this sentence doesn't need any article here observe these two sentences correctly here this word one is related to i it's not telling you there is one man it is telling you that there is a one eyed man so this one is related to i then how many men are there one man one man is there so where is that sense of one conveyed not conveyed so you have to write a there a means one at the very beginning of this video i have told you a and yan are equal to one so this a is telling us that there is one man now look at this there is dash one thing thing is a noun here and how many things are there one thing already that sense of one is conveyed and this one is related to this thing and so you need not write a or yan here already that sense of one is conveyed by this word one so don't misunderstand that when you find a word which is starting with the letter O after the blank, you should write A immediately before that word. So you should check whether the context is like this or not. If the context is like this, don't write any article there. Okay? So you should take this care. Next examples. European. Look at that word. What is the very first sound? U. It's not uh, ya. Among our vowel sounds, uh, we have ya as in yant, but we don't have u. It's a consonant sound. So, a European. Not an European, only a European. Next one. Dash. University. Once again, U sound, so A university, not an university. Next one, useful person. Once again, U sound, so A. Next one, useless fellow. The sound is U, so A. Next one. Dash, cat. What is the first sound? Ka. So, it's not a vowel sound. So, you should use A. Next one. Book. The first sound is Ba. It's not a 
vowel sound so a so like this a one eyed man a 100 rupee note a 1000 rupee note a european a university a useful person a useless fellow so before these words you should use a instead of am okay so this is about a and yan and examples now let us look at the context where we write a or yan when you want to convey that sense of one okay you should write either a or ya for example give me dash pen you might have seen many people saying give me pen it's a wrong sentence they should say give me a pen it's compulsory a or ya is compulsory of course you will follow the rules the first sound is pa it is not a vowel sound so we write a here so give me a pen give me a book give him an apple in apple the first sound is ya which is a vowel sound so you should use ya give me an apple okay like that so when you want to convey that sense of one you will use a or ya following the rule when you don't know a person or when you want to refer to a person who is not known to you you use a or ya for example there is dash anand on phone so what should i write here now that is am there is yan anand on phone you may get a reasonable doubt here that is anand is a proper noun and we don't use articles or we don't write articles before proper nouns yes generally we don't write articles before proper nouns but in this type of context when you want to talk about or when you want to refer to the people who are not known to you you will use a or ya and the meaning of this sentence is there is one man on phone he has told you that his name is anand and you don't know who that anand is so you are telling your father or mother that there is an anand on phone means there is a man on phone and his name is anand and he is not known to you so that is the meaning of this sentence next one ye or ya is used sometimes to refer to a group or a class or type of species or animals for example a dog is a faithful animal If you observe this sentence, I have used a here. A dog is a faithful animal. What do you mean by a dog? A dog means all dogs. Instead of saying all dogs are faithful animals, I am saying a dog is a faithful animal. But the meaning is the same. So here a dog means all dogs. Okay, an owl. is an owl is a nocturnal animal an owl means all owls here next point when you want to talk about somebody's profession or occupation you use a or ya for example raghu is a lawyer that's his profession raghu is a lawyer gopi is an accountant mukesh is a doctor like that so we use a or ya 
to express somebody's profession or occupation. A or Yam before the abbreviations which are read as words and the two after those abbreviations you have a singular noun. For example, a Sark country. It's a Sark country. Okay. Sark is an abbreviation, you know. And here is the word country, a singular noun, singular countable noun. So here A comes. So A, Sark country. So when you, next point, to introduce a new thing or to mention a new thing for the first time. Just imagine that I saw a tree yesterday and now I want to describe that tree. How should I start? I saw a tree yesterday. Why have I used the word a tree here? Because you don't know about which tree I am talking now. So, in the very first sentence, I should use a tree because I am introducing that tree to you now. Or I am mentioning that tree for the first time to you now. So, I should say a tree. In the second sentence onwards, I can say the tree because the tree has already been introduced to you by the second sentence. So, in the very first sentence, you should use a or a like this. So, these are the six contexts in which you have to use a or a. Next one, no article. In the same video, I am going to teach when you should not use any article. So, this is called no article first one before proper nouns don't use any article what are the examples for proper nouns names of persons like Ravi, Peter, Shamu, Anand Names of mountains like Mount Everest, Mount Kilimanjaro, Mount Kanchanaganga, etc. Names of countries, names of places, etc. So before the names of particular persons, things or animals, don't use any article. Of course, exceptional cases are there. We have already discussed. Okay. So, generally we don't write any article before this proper nouns. Mount Everest is the highest peak in the Himalayas. So, you don't say the Mount Everest. Okay. India is our country. Hyderabad is my favorite city. Ravi is a lawyer. So, before proper nouns, don't use any article. Next point. Before some places like school, university, college, hospital, etc. So before these places you should not use any article when you are going to those places for the primary purpose of a primary purpose. Primary purpose means what is the primary purpose behind the establishment of a school to impart education to children. 
so when you are a student of a school and when you are starting for that school you should say or you should tell your parents that you are starting for school not for the school because you are a student you are going to school as a student so you should not say the school but your parents can say that they are going to the school to pay the fee your father can say today i am going to the school to pay the fee but uh, as a student of that school you cannot say i am going to the school today you have to say i am going to school he goes to school every day now we should understand that he is a student of that school but uh, if you say he goes to the school every day you should understand that that man may be a teacher but not a student next to university same college same come to hospital so when you go to a hospital to get a treatment or when you go to a hospital as a patient you cannot use the hospital you should say i went to hospital yesterday then we shall understand that yesterday you were ill and so you went to hospital to get a treatment but if you say i went to, to the hospital yesterday we shall understand that nothing happened to you yesterday and you went to, to the hospital to meet your friends there or to meet your doctor friends there so that is the difference next one before the words which are related to food like lunch breakfast dinner supper etc so don't use any article before this words which are related to food next point don't use any article before the names of the diseases he died of cancer so observe this word cancer have i written any article here no because cancer is the name of a disease so you should say he died of cancer he died of fever or he died of typhoid so like that you cannot use any article before the name of that disease another example ravi is suffering from fever so once again you can see it clearly that i have not used any article here so before the names of the diseases like uh, cancer fever flu influenza okay measles don't use any article before the means of transport don't use any article for example he came by train Don't use this expression by train. Don't say by the train. Don't say by a train. Say he came by train. She came by car. I went there by flight. He came here by bicycle. So before the means of transport, you write the word by, and between this by and that word, you don't write any article here. By train. By flight, by bicycle, by bike, by car, like that. Before gold, say gold is a precious metal. But don't say the gold, don't say ye gold. Copper, platinum, silver. etc right with this 
this video has been completed so if you want more videos from me you can subscribe my channel let's meet in our next video until then bye